We have this amazing lady in our restaurant at Rai and she makes all the amazing cocktails and everything. She'll come to us for the names because we do a lot of Indian inspired cocktails and then she made this cocktail which is very specific. The first thing I ask her is what are the ingredients you use and she says uh, there's this, this, this and bitter. I said just name it Sasuma. Sasuma means mother-in-law. People get it? Well my wife doesn't get it so it's okay. <laughs> My name is Chintan Pandya. I am executive chef at Rahi and Adda NYC. So we are going to make one of the snack dishes from India, which is known as samosa. It's my personal favorite. It's a, it's a very simple recipe. The first thing that we are going to start up with is boiling the potatoes. The way we started is we take cold water, not hot or warm. Just steep the potatoes inside the water. Add a little bit of salt to the water. One of the reasons I use the whole potatoes and I don't cut it is once you cut it, it will start absorbing a lot of water and it makes it starchy. And you don't want your potato to be starchy in a samosa. It has to have a little bite and little dryness here and there. And that's why we also started with cold water so that it, when you do it with the hot water, it will absorb more water and it will be more starchy. So while we are doing this, it might take around 20, 25, 30 minutes. We'll start with our dough. So we have pre-measured flour over here. I'm going to add the oil in. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna work with it like we work with a short crisp pastry. So we are gonna just crumble it. It's very important to do this. As I said, there are small things which a lot of people don't do it. It will just say that, oh, mix the recipe in the dough kneader or in the kitchen aid. But what it does is it won't form these crumbs. And it's very important to form these crumbs to get a very crusty texture on your samosa. This is the real way of doing it. In India, a lot of places which makes awesome samosas still make the dough with the hand. I'm gonna add a little ajwain to it. Samosa is a deep fried dish. When you eat a lot of fried dishes, it creates gas in your body. And ajwain has a medical quality, which is basically it's a flatulent. It gets the gas out of your body. So that's the reason why we add ajwain to the samosas. I've added salt. Give me a minute, I'll just mix it up nicely. You see the texture of the flour? When you just directly knead it into the dough kneader or with the hand, it won't give you this texture. You need to have this texture exactly coming through. This is all due to the mixing of oil with the flour. So we don't need a very soft dough, it needs to be a little hard. You'll get a dough which is something like this. It's a very crumbly texture, but that's okay. That's what you need exactly. Because you don't want to add more water because it will make it soft. Now what you do is you work with the dough. You see this texture, this is what you exactly want. It doesn't need to be very smooth. It has to have a little bit of crumbliness, which is giving it the more short crust qualities to it. So we are just gonna rest this dough for a few minutes at room temperature. You don't need to chill it. It needs to be at the room temperature. So guys, this has been boiling now for 20 plus minutes. Let's have a look at it if it's done or not. The way I do it is I just insert the knife inside the potato. If it slides through it, it's cooked through and through. If it doesn't, let it cook more. So let's do that. Yes, it's sliding through, so it's done. So guys, the potatoes are ready. We're just gonna let it cool down a bit. Then we'll start peeling it. Samosa is like made in different parts of the country in different ways. Most common one is the one with the potato and the green pea made in eastern, western and northern part of India. The key ingredient which is the green pea and the potato remain the same. The spicing goes a little different. Then there are a lot of uh, other communities like we have a community like the Muslim community, the Parsi community. What they do is they do samosas with lamb mince, chicken mince, chicken liver. I'm just gonna mash it randomly. You don't need to be cutting it very specifically or anything, just mash it up. So there should be some chunks, some mashed. We have everything ready for our filling. I'm just gonna pan over here. I'm just gonna add a little oil to it. I've got some coriander over here, coriander seeds, which is roasted, some cumin seeds. I just tend to crush it a bit. And when you crush it, I'm not gonna cook the entire mixture. I'm just gonna heat up the mixture and mix it up. I just want more flavors out of it at this point of time. Heat up the oil. I'm just gonna add the spices. I just take it off the flame a bit. Gonna add the green peas to it. Add a little salt. Add the turmeric to it. Add a little chaat masala. 
So what all we have inside this right now is we started off with the crushed roasted cumin and coriander seeds. Then we added the green peas inside it. We let it just sizzle a bit. Then we added the salt. Then we added the turmeric. We mix it up very well. You can't use raw turmeric powder, so it needs to just get a little cooked. But once you have that, you just add in the potatoes to it. You know, that's the beauty of the samosa. It needs to be uneven. A very street side kind of a snack. So it is just randomly somewhere you'll find it mass, somewhere you find a chunk of it. But always remember you have to keep on tasting it because when you boil the potatoes, we added salt to it. So I'm just gonna mix this up a bit. It's ready, we just need to cool it for some time. So guys, the dough has rested now. What I'm doing is I'm not, you can roll it with hand and use it. I'm gonna use machine over here, which is a KitchenAid pasta roller. I love it. Never knew it existed till the time I saw it. Why don't you do it with the hand and why do you do it with the pasta roller? I think what happens, by using this, you can actually have a proper training standard for your team and they exactly know at what thinness and thickness you need to do it always. What happens is that I can say, oh, roll it thin. Now, it's a very subjective term when I say roll it thin. You might perceive it in a different way. Somebody else might perceive it in a different way. So this is a foolproof method where everybody knows this is where you roll it at. What entirely happens is to do it in an oval mold. So I'm gonna cut it like this and you cut it into half. So you hold it on your finger like this. You'll need a bit of water with you. So you apply the water over here, turn it around, get this cone. You hold it like this, you have your stuffing in, apply water again, close it. And that's how your samosa should be ready. So one of the key to samosa when you know it's good is this has to come into the center. It's aligned in the center, so that means, you know, the dough on either side is not more or less. It's in center exactly, it fries right, the bottom is right. It looks like dumpling, but it's, trust me, it's difficult. No, it looks very simple when somebody else does it. It took me at least, I would say like, I would have made like 400, 500 pieces before I could even get it right. It's like, you know, riding a bicycle. Once you learn it, you learn it, then you don't forget it. When you're doing it at home and you do it once in a week, what you can do is you can make multiple of this, as many as you want, freeze them, and whenever you want to use them, just take it out, let it defrost for some time, and then you can fry it. The right way of frying a samosa is basically you fry it at two different temperatures. One is a low temperature. I keep it around 225 to 250. I fry it at a slow fire for around 15, 20 minutes, let it cook on its own. I move it to a hot temperature, which is around 375 degrees to give it a good color to it. When they make it in India on the food stalls and everything, they don't have this facility. They basically put it on a low heat first and then just once the batch is done, they increase the height and then they remove it. And then they let it again cool down before they add the next batch in. So I'm just gonna drop these in. So what's gonna happen is they're gonna sink to the bottom because they're very heavy. Then it will take time to cook entirely. And then slowly they will start coming on top as we're gonna move to a high heat, which will give it a more darker color. What also happens is we get a lot of scrapes like this. So what my mother would do is, she would actually literally fry this. And you can eat this as a snack. You can just bite onto it. It's like a crisp. In India, we call something like this a namak para. Namak means salt, para means like a crisp. A dish that you enjoy frying, you won't enjoy baking it. And I think baking a samosa is a criminal offense. A lot of people try to do it for the health reasons and everything, but I feel that if you're gonna enjoy a food, please enjoy it in its original form, where it's actually fried. Like samosa is a fried dish. It was never a baked dish. It is just that we feel that it makes it healthier. That's why we're doing it. But I don't find much validity to it. What has happened is that uh, now we have been frying it for like next 10, 15 minutes or so. I'll fry it for more five minutes. We are getting a light, light color, you see this? It's getting cooked now, the crust is getting formed. So it's never gonna get a dark color like this over here because the temperature is low. This is just to make sure it's getting cooked inside properly. And once we feel that it's ready now, you see the samosas now are on top. So it's nearly getting cooked. We'll just finish off over here. So here what we are doing is we just need the color. You see this, the color is coming. The texture is very crumbly, it's, it's very hard, and it has a bite to it, that's what you're looking for. And the mixture itself is a little sour and salty, 
that's what you want with chunks of potatoes inside it, some mash, some whole. To get the recipe and the method, please click in the link below.